What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoose, you are awesome, and welcome to this discussion about esports. I've got a couple gentlemen here to help me out today, starting with Mr. Fancy Pants, a last minute substitution. How you doing, Fancy? I'm great. How are you? Good, good, good. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit oh. of background. Great. Uh, so I'm the producer at Project Stamina, and uh, on this topic, I have been a competitive gamer for... Oh God, close to 20 years now. And uh, I was a former tournament organizer and community moderator for our local fighting game community scene. Oh, right on. And also joining us from Strange Matter Studios, the guys that are making Fault, is Ryan Red. Hello, everybody. Nice to uh, be here. Thank you again, Mangoose. Uh, as, I, as you guys might know, I'm the community manager for uh, Strange Matter Studios. I also will be the esports and organizer for all of the esports events. I'm basically the main organizer for all of that. And I do a couple other little things here and there, but mainly I'm the community manager for now. Right on, right on. So uh, before we get any further, um, I, of course, have my own background to display. You know, I always throw a little bit of background up behind us while we're talking just to have something pretty to look at. But I don't have anything for Gigantic, so I contacted uh, Failco Punch from Project Stamina, and she was gracious enough to allow me to use some of her content. So that'll be spliced in throughout. If you want to check her out, I will link her YouTube channel in the video description below. So uh, let's get on with this. Let's talk about esports and uh, their effect on these projects, uh, how they could affect these projects. Uh, esports, is it's been growing like 30% year by year. I pulled a couple numbers here. Um, so it's expected by 2020 that it'll be 557 million people that are watching esports and like billions of hours, um, almost a billion dollars in revenue by 2020. Uh, last In 2018, it was 906 million, I believe. So it's a huge thing. It's something that a lot of people are trying to get into. But what I kind of wanted to discuss is, do you guys think that it is necessary for these new games to have an esports scene to survive? Or is it just kind of a nice to have thing? Uh, Ryan, what are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, a lot of people might look at it as something that's just nice to have, but with how esports is today, like you just said, the growth is insane. The revenue that they all receive is insane. I mean, look at League of Legends. Uh, they had over 100 million people tune into the World Championships, and I believe the Super Bowl was only about 90 million. So it kind of tells oh, really? you. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I think it was about 94, 95 million, uh, which is kind of insane when you look at it like that. Uh, it's. I mean, anybody can be a champion in esports. It's something that's just amazing and it just keeps growing. And because of that growth and the fact that that's kind of the current mindset for a lot of people with it being everywhere, I believe that it is definitely a good thing for games to get into, at least games that are worthy of a comp scene. Otherwise, you just kind of get sort of a stale, slow scene, <laughs> which isn't the most enjoyable thing. I won't name any games, but. Uh, yeah, I believe it's something that's very important. Um, it's also incredibly hype, which just gets spread by everybody. Yeah, some background audio. <laughs> yeah, where that's where I live. Okay, <laughs> all right. But yeah, it's definitely something uh, I think that's crucial uh, in today's scene. Anyway, obviously a long time ago, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But with the growth that we've been seeing, I mean, just why wouldn't you if you had the product why wouldn't you now uh, fancy what's what you guys stance on uh esports uh m our stance is that okay so there's like esports and there's competitive and i i could draw a distinction there from like esports as the tournament spectacle that focuses on ad revenue as its like primary means of income. And then there are competitive scenes that are about communities getting together and playing the game to get better at it. And in an ideal world, those two go hand in hand. And I think that that's what you've been talking about, Ryan, with a, a product that is worthy of having an esports scene. Mm -hmm. um, as a fighting game player, I think that a competitive scene is absolutely vital because without, in a competitive game, without a scene 
community, whatever you want to call it, of people who are trying to improve for the sake of enjoying the game and pushing each other to get better. Uh, the game, no matter how deep and complex it is, will get stale because people aren't pushing themselves to get better. Uh, and in terms of the esports tournament sports advertising spectacle, I think that once you reach a th certain threshold of player base, it's absolutely necessary. But I think that there are a lot of cases where it can do more harm than good to try and force a game into that spotlight. Yeah, I can understand that for sure. Um, I think, uh, I think uh, you know, you have to get it established first. And you have to have some sort of um, competitive base in the game, and it needs to have, you know, your 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 ban phase, and it has to have some sort of ranked mode because that's a that's a big part of esports is is the ban phase, and that's you know there are players out there that are known specifically for their pick ban strategies. So I think that needs to be part of a game before you you can even think about moving on to any kind of esports. I mean, that's just my opinion. I'm no expert on the subject at all. That's why I got you guys here. Uh, what do you guys think, Ryan? I completely agree. I mean, that's part of the thing that makes it viable. Uh, <clears throat> you need to be at a place where your game essentially doesn't have any... Uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to word it. Essentially, Solid? if there's too many cheeses, for instance, and you're able to easily cheese, and it's basically just who knows the better cheese. If it's uh, so, essentially, it needs to be properly balanced. And as you said, pick and bands is essential for sure. It is something that's in pretty much all of the big MOBAs, anyway. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a bunch of DMs at the same time that I'm trying to talk, so I'll pass it <laughs> off to uh, Mr. Fancy Pants here. Yeah, I personally, I completely agree. I, I, I've i heard arguments for uh, a game should try to be so perfectly balanced that bans are not necessary because avenues to beat whatever strategy are presenting themselves should always be available. And I think that that's great in a perfect world. And as soon as sho someone shows me a game that is so balanced that it that's not necessary in a team setting i'll believe that it's possible yeah i don't think that'll uh don't think that'll ever happen yeah personally i think it adds a lot of depth of strategy and it allows for in in the like deep tournament meta where you're playing you know 20 games over a couple of days against a series of opponents like you can have a guy who's just on a hot streak with a certain character and it's, you know tournaments aren't about who's best it's just about who's best that day and so if you can identify when the opposing team has you know a, a star support that's just making all the plays or a star carry whatever position game structure you have you know if you have somebody that is just really driving on a certain character being able to ban them out is a really it, it's an important it's an important level of the tournament strategy in addition to the larger strategy because you can play against not only characters but against people and that's what ultimately pro metas are it's just whichever characters the pros feel most like they're going to win on i think uh i think one of the sort of the hidden benefits of of, of esports and having a, a good esports scene and having something for everybody to watch is games no longer come with like the little booklets you know <laughs> like when we were kids mm -hmm. you know you're you know the little booklet explained everything that that's not a thing anymore there's lots of stuff to learn that you have to learn by either just experiencing it or watching other people play or learning it during the game and if i think the best way to do that is to watch other people do it for example in paragon i played with people like that had been playing for like a, the, like a year in Paragon and didn't know that you could take Gideon's portal. Like that's like a, a basic <laughs> thing that just people just didn't know. So mm -hmm. by the way, I think that's a great idea. You guys should do that as like a founder's pack, offer a little booklet for, for, for the game. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that, I think that Retro education as, aspect is there, you know, learning, um, you know, times for camp spawnings and 
um, I guess for gigantic, like the, the the best way to place your summons or what, where uh, you know what to summon, where and when, and um, that's a lot of information that can be gained just by watching uh, professional play. There mm -hmm. is a downside to it as well, though, is you get players that will watch these professional players that are practiced and coordinated and have these strats that work really well for them will come into a quick match game with people that they've never met before in their life and expect everyone to execute that professional strategy perfectly. So mm -hmm. there is a little bit of toxicity. So there's education and toxicity um, present if when you do introduce esports to to the game. Uh, Fancy, any thoughts on that? I I really like what you had to say about having a having a visible competitive scene helping get people into a game um one of the one of the ways that i got back into competitive well got back into mobas after not playing for years was i started watching pro dota games and following with the commentary that came along with it and i think having somebody who is practiced at delivering what is happening in the game and why it works is really valuable for getting people who don't understand the depth of the game to start getting excited about it. And when you get people who don't play a game excited about a game, that's what's going to get them to try it out. Yeah, very true. Ryan, any yeah, thoughts? I've always, believe, I've always believed that like content like that is all part of the community and something I love so much. Like when you, for instance, during the holiday, when I got to come online and type fault into Twitch and just see all of these people streaming it and giving out information. It was just an amazing feeling. And it's why we have um, for information gathering for the people who don't really know much about fault. We have our partners uh, on Twitch, YouTube and Mixer, and they kind of they they're really helpful people who produce a lot of content, whether it just be hype content or actual informational videos. Um, but we are very community forward and we want to be able to give everybody as much information as we can uh that booklet idea is still ringing around in the back of my head <laughs> <laughs> you just get a little you know a tutorial book uh, that'd be great i miss the days of single player gaming i mean there's still some of them that are doing pretty good but i mean esports and online gaming in general is just kind of taken over yeah now th there are some negative aspects to it um such as people devoting so much time to the game that it's a detriment to their health, um, you know, carpal yeah. tunnel syndrome. You have examples of people that play the game uh, until they die. Like people died playing World of Warcraft, trying to get world firsts and stuff like that. Do you think it's the responsibility of the studio or the company to step in and try and take measures, like maybe put information out there, um, you know, warning against that sort of thing, you know, tell, telling people to... Hey, you know, maybe take a step back for a while and you're you're not going to become a competitive player overnight, you know, just take it easy. You guys think that you have there there's any responsibility either, either legally or morally there, uh Ryan? Legally, I couldn't say for sure, but I feel like uh, I definitely know that there's been scientific cases of gaming addiction that have been pretty uh, detrimental to some people's early lives. Uh, I mean, that's when you're doing most of your growing and when you're just sitting in a chair hunched over for all of your growing period, it's not the best shape for you to be in once you reach adulthood. Uh, it can have some pretty bad effects on you. <laughs> yeah. So I, I agree that it's definitely, it's not to mention eye strain and everything else. I definitely agree that it's something that people should know about and it's hard to say be warned about, but it is something they should be warned about if they are just hurting through the pain not using the washroom not eating because they're just grinding the next match after match i mean i've been guilty of that myself i was a big rpg player and i can't tell you how many days i wasted grinding a raid boss with people yeah <laughs> uh as far as legally as i said i'm not too sure but i definitely think it is something that should be said whether it be a little in-game thing after you've been grinding for hours on end like some have done in the past lots of games kind of tell you once you've saved for like your 10th time in the past like six hours <laughs> <laughs> like maybe you should take a break um legally i wouldn't know but definitely i think it's something that we should put out there I, I any thoughts i absolutely agree like you know 
almost everything is fine in moderation and gaming is no exception and it can be really hard on a person mentally physically emotionally to sink hours and hours and hours into a pastime that isn't necessarily feeding them and the idea that anyone can make it as a pro um it's really it's really awesome and it's really great to see people live that dream but i think it's really important for game developers and the advertisers uh to point out the 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 people that make it often get there because they have healthy habits and because they have supportive families and they have the opportunity to put that much time into a game with a growth mindset and do what it takes to reach that level of play because it's not easy and your body can only maintain that level of actions per minute with your mouse hand for so many years before you kind of slow down and those seconds matter as all the game all the like advertisements for new video cards tell us and um yeah i think i'm i think i'm pretty much just going to rephrase what ryan said at this point so i'm going to say yes i agree that it is morally important for people to be aware of what their games are doing with the rest of their lives i like that you you mentioned advertisers i didn't even think of that but like ergonometrically designed i could not say that right cans of mountain dew i don't think or like that always cracks me up that like these loaded up monster energy drinks are marketed so hard to gamers it's like if anybody doesn't need a giant can of sugar and carbs it's somebody that's sitting there playing a game for hours you know mm -hmm. yeah that's that's such a weird thing to me I am, however, going to take a hard left turn on this. I don't think, I think it's nice if a company does do something to, you know, warn and uh, take a little bit of responsibility for the health of their audience. I don't think that they are morally ob obligated to do so, though. I think if somebody dies because they're dehydrated from playing a game for 48 hours, then they've probably never had sex and they never will now that's darwin's way of weeding out those people out we don't need them polluting our gene pool that's that's my that's stance on saying. that <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Ugh. I, I hear obviously you. it shouldn't be something that we need to do you should yeah. know yeah you shouldn't need you to know, do it but <laughs> if you're if you're close to dehydrating to the point of like falling off your chair you shouldn't be grip to your mouse and keyboard <laughs> <laughs> people do it though it's so weird but uh yeah i think uh that's pretty much it on the topic uh final thoughts um ryan you got any fi final thoughts uh is this where i plug my soundcloud <laughs> go for it <laughs> no, um basically the only final thoughts i really have is uh i cannot wait until fall really gets to an esports scene um, obviously we need to get some balancing out of the way and some other stuff going. Uh, we might have some little scrim events between past pros, um, but it's definitely something I'm incredibly excited for. I cannot wait until we're there and the esports community starts thriving. I'm sitting on the edge of my seat, screaming at my screen for somebody to, you know, <laughs> land that auto or get that last stun. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I don't know. It's, the community has just been so amazing and overwhelming. I'm sure that when esports comes around, it's going to be a great time, and I can't wait for it. Same here, man. Uh, fancy? Uh, what you said, you basically said it perfectly. Like The Project Stamina community has been really fantastic. Our early playtests have been super fun, and there are still a lot of mechanics that we're looking forward to adding to those systems. And... I can't wait to see people building strats and executing them and showing me just how, like, just how bad I am at this game that I made compared to them. <laughs> Cause that's, that's really what it's all about is like making something that somebody likes so much that they beat you at it. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned plugs. You can go ahead and plug, plug it, plug away. Oh no, I was just I was just joking around. Um, if you want to plug, head on over to playfault.com. Check out strange underscore underscore matter on Twitter. 
Uh, we have all of our new content popping out all over the place. You can see it on YouTube, Strange Matter Studios. Uh, you can join the Discord, which I might be able to ask Mangoose to pop a link below. Of course. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Uh, but yeah, that's about all I really have to plug. Fancy? All right. You can catch Project Stamina at projectstamina.com. You can find links to all of our social media at the top bar of the website. And on the bottom of the website is a sign up for our mailing list, which will have information about our upcoming alpha sent to you at an undisclosed date. Right on. So, uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up. I really appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, it's been a been an interesting uh, topic of conversation. You guys opened my eyes to a couple different things, which I always appreciate. But for now, this is the Mangu signing off. You guys have a good one. Man, goo!